Finland, the rise and fall of an educational giant, the decline of a system that didn't evolve. In Finnish, Siomen Nyosu Ya Laskuku Ya Sen Ya. I think one of the most important political issues in Finland is that we want to uh, have the system where all the pupils and all the people have the equal opportunities and education, and it doesn't matter where you are living or are you rich or poor or are you girl or boy. We want to give equal opportunities for everyone. The European country of Finland is the eighth largest country in Europe. It is bordered by Sweden and Russia. Between the 12th to the 19th century, it was a part of Sweden. Then it became an autonomous Grand Duchy within the Russian Empire until it gained its independence. The capital of Finland is the city of Helsinki. And the beautiful landscape of this entire country has over 200,000 lakes and 86% of the land is covered by forest. The Gulf Stream attributes to relatively mild climate. However, northern Finland can get severely cold with temperatures in the negative 50 range. And this area also suffers from two months of continual darkness in the winter. This cold climate can contribute to some of the most spectacular sights, which are the ice hotels and restaurants, as seen here, which is the Kimi Lumi Lina. The Olavin Lina Castle is the northernmost medieval stone fortress that is still standing in this country. It is a major tourist attraction. With artists such as Edvard Isto and his painting The Attack, which symbolizes Finnish resistance to the perceived Russification, Thomas Corby and his painting Heart of the Forest, and the variety of pottery which has been created throughout the years, such as corded ware and comb ware shown here. Finland is considered to be a very artistic country. This timeline shows some of the major occurrences that has occurred throughout this country's existence. However, the most important of these would be the independence that they gained from Russia in 1917. This resulted in the formation or, and transformation of their educational system. Comprehensive school systems were developed and all of this led to Finland being named an educational leader internationally. Some fun facts about the country. Ice skating is a very popular pastime they are believed to have created the ice skate. The annual cell phone throwing championships. The development of saunas. Nearly 20% of all homes in Finland have these. The air guitar world championships. The wife carrying world championships. Looks like fun. Baseball, also known as nest ball or pesapalio. Santa, who is said to live in Korvatunturi. The world famous Rovio Entertainment, who developed the Angry Birds app, which has over 1 billion downloads to date. The Olympics, which was sponsored in Helsinki in 1952. Finland is said to be among the most decorated of countries regardless of its small size in comparison to places such as Russia and United States. And lastly, their music. One of the popular groups, Apocalypta, is a Finnish metal band which consists of four classically trained cellists and a drummer. They are most known for their rendition rendition of various Metallica hits.
The population of Finland is approximately 5.4 million. The prominent language is Finnish, followed by Swedish, Sami, and English. 51% of families have one child. Large families are relatively unheard of. About 85% of residents reside in an urban area, typically located in the southern region of the country. Finland has recently been ranked as the second place winner of the Gross National Happiness Rankings. The currency is the Finnish marka and euro. This country is known for services, manufacturing, and refining, things such as forestry, water use and purification, electronics such as Nokia and Linux, and vehicles and paper manufacturing are all a part of their GDP. Overall, there is widespread prosperity in this country with an 8.7% unemployment rate. One third of persons in this country work at the age of 61. Politically, they are set up to have a parliamentary democratic republic that has a prime minister and a president. Under the new constitution, the prime minister is the most powerful. The president or head of state holds some power, primarily with heading the armed forces and foreign policy. The parliament, which consists of 200 members who have four-year elected terms, can override presidential vetoes. Also, there considered to have a multi-party system with more than a dozen political parties. Therefore, it is a rare occurrence of any one party being in total control. Finland is a relatively homogeneous society. It has a 3.8% immigrant population, and of this percentage, less than 1% are from third world countries. It has a loosely defined class system, which is not defined by socioeconomic status, but rather based on more education, political, and title status. Individualism and equality between the sexes is strongly encouraged, as this can be seen with the number of women who hold high-powered positions in this country. Also, Finland is viewed to be among the world's most innovative of countries. They promote creativity, and the arts are heavily subsidized, allowing most events to be free. The official church of Finland is the Evangelical Lutheran Church, with approximately 77% of the population belonging to it. However, only 2% attend service weekly. Most services at holiday time, such as Christmas, Easter, etc., are the most attended. 21% of the population has no religious affiliation. And only 2% are from other religions, again tying in to the homogeneous nature of this country. Pictured here are the Cathedral of Turku and the Church on the Rock in Helsinki, which are two of the most popular or famous churches in this region. Photographed here, are the Cathedral of Turku and the Church on the Rock in Helsinki, which are the most famous of churches in the country. Since 1970, Finland has taken many steps to climb from the bottom of the educational chain to its high standing now. The educational administrators in the United States feel that our educational system could greatly benefit from the various tactics that the Finnish system has implemented. However, their ranking at the top of the pile has dropped over the past few years, leaving a lot of work for people such as Krista Kiru, who is the Finnish Minister of Education and Science, who was nominated in 2013, and Posse Salberg, who is the famous educator and policy advisor who wrote the book Finnish Lessons, What Can the World Learn from Educational Change in Finland, who is a visiting professor at Harvard in their Graduate School of Education. The educational framework of Finland consists of a six-level educational system. Once implemented, this system has allowed Finland to grow to the top of their game. The first step, baby and toddler daycare, which is provided for all families free of charge. Second, between the ages of six to seven, children are 
engrossed in a one-year preschool program, which teaches primarily social etiquette. Between 7 and 16, pupils spend approximately nine years in a compulsory comprehensive school, which is mandatory. Between 16 to 19, they have the option of participating in a three-year post-compulsory system, which is focused either on ed academics or vocation. They can then go on to higher education to receive a bachelor's or a master's. And finally, as far as adult education is concerned, this can go on lifelong and continuing, and students can obtain things such as doctors and various certificates. There are many reasons why Finland has been so successful. This list is just a short composite of their many tactics. First, they provide readily available resources. All levels of education are nationally funded. Approximately 5.9% of the GDP is spent on education, which includes free meals, transport, counseling, and materials. However, even with this, they spend less per child than most countries, including the United States. They provide highly qualified teachers. The teachers are selected from the top 10% of high school graduates, and they are rigorously trained. They have a centralized focus on the individual child, which caters to the student's needs, providing small classrooms, extended recess periods, well-equipped and maintained facilities, and hands-on experiments on a regular basis. Their focus is equality over ed excellence. This means that there is the same education for all students, regardless of socioeconomic status. Things such as private schools are unheard of. However, the few that do exist must admit everyone. They cannot charge fees, and they are typically known as Steiner schools, which are faith-based. They provide an intensive early intervention and prevention program. Approximately two out of three students receive special needs assistance at some time during their educational program. This also includes the development of a student welfare team, which consists of counselors, administrators, educators, who all work for the betterment of the child's educational growth. There are no exams or homework, primarily because they believe that mastery is attained in the classroom. Tests are not implemented until later in the teen years with the one standardized exam that is administered at the age of 16. Assessment overall is given to cultivate active learning in the students. They are known for the promotion of childhood independence. Self-sufficiency is taught at a very early age. Students know how to get to school on their own. They also play an active role in setting weekly targets. It has an inquiry-based curriculum, and the school and teacher autonomy is great. There is little to no governmental intervention. There is a high collaboration between teachers and administration. So regardless of how the political parties may change, education is basically unaffected. Being a teacher in Finland is a highly coveted position. There are 62,000 educators in the 3,500 schools of the Finnish educational system. This profession is highly esteemed, where teachers are ranked above doctors, lawyers, architects, and the likes. This ranking is high because of the importance that is based on the educator and that educational systems are known to work through them. Only the top 10% of high school graduates are selected to participate in teacher training programs. This can be as competitive as getting into an Ivy League school. All educators must have a master's degrees. They must participate in a five-year training program, which enforces a connection between theory and practice. Also, there is a limited amount of program availability. Overall, Finland has only eight 
programs that specialize in teacher training. They must undergo continual professional development. There is regular modern training for all. They have a high level of intellectual freedom. They basically select their own curriculum and materials, as well as they have high levels of teacher collaboration. They are a group that is nationally supported. Their country backs them all the way. They have no new unions. Also, the most important is that all educators have a strong personal and professional commitment to student success. Successes, challenges, and debates. Some of the successes of Finland are that they have the top teachers, as mentioned before. They provide a good learning experience for all of their pupils. This gives them a low stress level. Unlike countries such as South Korea, they have no fees for any of their education. They provide equality for every student, regardless of race, creed, and financial status. And they also develop a very strong teacher to student relationship. Finland has also ranked among the top PISA scores for the past decade. This was also during a time of major influx of immigrant population into the country. They have a high graduation rate with approximately 90% graduating from high school and 66% going on to college. The country has a very low variability from student to student and school to school. This ranks them among the lowest in the world. For a country that has ranked at the top of the educational system for nearly a decade, they have slowly declined in their PISA rankings. However, regardless of this decline, they are still considered to be among the best and their decline is not very significant in relation to their overall success. In 2006, Finland was in the top three of all categories of PISA testing. In 2009, they were in the top three in all categories but mathematics. However, in 2012, they dropped down to the 12th level in the PISA rankings. Finnish educators, as well as those from around the world, have been debating back and forth in regards to why Finland has fallen from the top of its rankings. Among these, the top concern has been complacency and lack of focus. It is believed that Finland focused more on sharing the wealth so to say, than focusing on continual innovation of their educational system. The other theory has been high touch and low tech. Finland focuses primarily on student-teacher interaction. However, little to no emphasis has been placed on technology, which is quite strange for a country who is known for its innovation. Next, it has been placed 32nd in the world in early childhood enrollment. This can hinder the overall growth of students. Also, they have had issues with mathematics. The largest drop in all of their PISA scores has been in math. It has been known that only four days a week are spent on mathematics in the classroom. And this is at a very basic level. Some external concerns have been that there has been an altering of other national curricula. Other countries have changed how they think. They have implemented the use of pizza-shaped lessons and coaching. They have also implemented the utilization of Finland-based practices, basically using their weapons against them. Finally, a comparison of Finland to the United States of America. 
First, the overall number of student to teacher ratio is half that in Finland in comparison to the United States. Second, the United States implements extremely high levels of standardized tests. Overall, U.S. students take approximately 100 million standardized tests a year, whereas Finland only has one at the age of 16. Finland children have time to be kids. On average, they receive 75 minutes of recess compared to the typical 27 in the United States. Also, Finnish students rarely do homework into their teens. Whereas in the United States, the average fifth grader has 50 minutes of homework per day. Finland has an overall graduation rate at 93%, whereas United States has a graduation rate of 75%. Also, in Finland, approximately two in three students will go to college. That is the highest rate in all of Europe. And lastly, Finland's educators are esteemed as, th as their doctors and lawyers. Their pay starts at approximately $46,000 to $50,000 a year, which is above their national average. The United States pay is significantly lower than the average. Uh, Finland's educational system. Yes. So, so fascinating thing. So about three decades ago, uh, Finland uh, has an educational system that's doing terribly. And they look around and they go, okay, what are we going to do about this, right? we got to revamp the whole thing. And they decide, for whatever reason, you know, the Republicans here would call them, uh, you know, no good socialists, etc., that they were going to focus on equality. Well, I know, that's crazy in a democracy. And it's not equality of results uh, because they didn't even uh, do tests. They don't do any testing until the age of 16, okay? So no standardized testing, etc. Equality of opportunity. So they said no matter if you're poor or rich or you're in the middle, uh, our objective is to reach equality of opportunity. And by the way, and this is amazing and it would make Republican heads explode here in the U.S., uh, we are not uh, going to achieve, uh, we're not going to try for excellence. Already like in, in America, it's like, what? They're like, no, no, we just want everybody to have a fair chance. Right. right? They got rid of competitiveness within their schools. Yeah. Instead of focusing so much on pressuring them, you got to be the best, you got to be the greatest, you got to score the highest on the standardized test. They're like, no, we're going to step back, we're going to let you discover what you're passionate about and follow your dreams. Okay, now, it gets crazy. Yeah. Okay, wait till you see the results. Okay, they said, you know what, kindergarten, preschool, canceling it. You're not allowed to go to school till you're seven. You know why? Because kids should be kids. <laughs> Heads exploding here in America. Nobody can. Okay, guess uh, weirder by American standards. No private schools allowed. None. Everybody has to go to public school. Okay? And but, but, uh, competition? How are you going to have competition? No, we're not going to have competition. Get this. We're going to pay our teachers a decent wage. Okay? And we're going to require them. Now, they're not getting paid outrageous. Okay? Right. They're just it's a decent wage, right? Uh, but, you know, it's a, a Finland, so they get health care, et cetera, et cetera. And right? also keep in mind, they changed the role of teachers. They became much more prestigious. Like, yes. it, wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, you're a teacher, whatever, you're making nickels and dimes. It was like, oh, my God, it you're was, a teacher. Now, so this is another mind-exploding thing. Uh, teachers are now, it's harder to get into a school to be a teacher than it is to get into school to be a lawyer or a doctor. Okay? And they have to get a master's degree and then they could become a teacher, and it's revered in the uh, society, okay? No standardized testing until you're 16. Uh, and the list goes on and on. So they're not even participating in the international tests because they're like, tests are, are, are silly. We're trying to find out what these kids want to do and, and give them an opportunity to do it well, right? In, in the beginning of the 2000, I think it was 2000 or 2001, they, they're like, all right, you know what, let's test the, the kids at the end here. Yeah, uh, it was a PISA study. The PISA stu uh, test. Okay, so let's let's enter them in there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. We don't expect much. Number one in the world. Number one in the world. And they said, well, it must have been a fluke. Even the Finnish thought it must have been an accident. Mm -hmm. We're not even trying for excellence. We're just trying to get people a fair chance, right? So they retested several times, not that year, in the ensuing years. Consistently top three in the world. The others are Singapore and South Korea where they're working the kids to death.
<laughs> okay, keep it real. Okay, and they're succeeding, and that's a different way of doing it. And look, and that's a you know, and one could argue about what's the better way to go. But so, and then the the guy who is the head of their education uh, department, uh, basically their education minister, comes and lectures here in the U.S. is a hilarious story in the Atlantic. He's explaining to the Americans, we don't do competition. Mm -hmm. The Americans are like, all right, so anyway, how do you compete? They're like, no, but we, no, we do cooperation. We're like, okay, anyway, so uh, what are your private schools up to? They're like, we don't have private schools. He's like, okay, so anyway, what are your private schools doing? <laughs> okay, no, no, but we don't have private schools. Like, he's explaining the system, and it's not fitting into their head. Like, the Americans are like, I don't, so anyway, the bottom line is, what? Uh, more competition, right? He's like... <laughs> It's like, no, that is not the bottom line. It's the exact opposite of the bottom line. And so, they, and he's written a book about it, and, yeah. and they say Americans try to learn from the Finnish model, but of course, uh, in the New York Times coverage of that story, so a different article, uh, they quote uh, somebody from a conservative think tank saying, oh, well, you can't, you can't do the Finnish model here, obviously. I mean, it's a totally different situation. Uh, you know, number one, they're much smaller. Uh, well, we do education state by state, so we'll compare them to one of our states about the same size, Kentucky. Kentucky, disaster. Finland, top of the world, right? Uh, okay, they say, oh, no, no, and I love this code word. They have a more homogeneous society. Yeah. You know what that means? That's code word for, well, they're all white. Okay, well, so of course they're going to do better. Oh, really? So then you go to Norway, which is their next door neighbor. Same exact ethnicity. Same exact homogeneous society. They use the American model. Disaster. They score near the bottom. Mm -hmm. So what now? What now is we're never going to change. No, because we're not. Because when you we're tell not. Americans this story, you know what they say? Well, our education system might have some troubles, but it's the best one in the world. You're number one! But wait a minute. In the testing, you're like number 15 or number 19. You're in disaster. You're saying, I, we're number one! We're I America! You would say. Why choose PowerPoint and Camtasia? PowerPoint allows for the implementation of presentation graphics that increase visual impact, engages multiple learning styles, and improves audience focus. With the use of this phenomenal platform in conjunction with the video recording tool Camtasia, a very effective and power powerful presentation can be created.